welcome to Cape Coral, Florida. In the next few minutes, we're going to take a tour of this city, learn a few facts about its population, its attractions, business climate, and even take a look back at its history. But to begin with, we're heading many miles in one direction, straight up. Cape Coral is located in Southwest Florida and is now the largest city between Tampa and Miami. It consists of 114 square miles, much of it surrounded by water. On the east side, it is separated from Fort Myers by the Caloosahatchee River. On the west side, it is separated from Pine Island by Matlache Pass. The development of Cape Coral began on November 4, 1957 by the Rosen Brothers. At the time, the future city was promoted as the Waterfront Wonderland. Home sites sold for between $990 and $3,390, depending on the water view or the location of the waterfront or riverfront home site. In the first year alone, the Rosen Brothers Gulf American Land Corporation reached more than $9 million in sales. Today, Cape Coral has a population of more than 160,000. And although many new businesses have sprung up along the city's main thoroughfares, many old-style commercial buildings still exist, with many lining the Cape Coral Parkway corridor. The oldest and perhaps most recognized business figure in Cape Coral may surprise you. It's Big John. This colorful character, the 28-foot-tall mascot of the South Cape Town Center, has been standing in place since 1969. He originally held grocery bags promoting Big John's discount food. Today, he promotes the entire plaza and in a big way. As for the general business climate in Cape Coral, it's on a rapid rise according to many local sources. In addition to a healthy business climate, Cape Coral also has an abundance of recreational activities. After all, the city boasts 400 miles of salt and freshwater canals creating a boaters and fishermen's paradise. With five public boat ramps located in various parts of the city, boat owners can depart their homes with their boats in tow and be cruising the water in no time at all. And speaking of water, one of Cape Coral's most popular attractions is Sunsplash Family Water Park, which has more than 20 wet and dry rides. On one ride, you head straight to a splashdown. On another, you twist and turn your way through an enclosed slide. There's also Mike Greenwald's Bata Ball and Family Fun Park, which features miniature golf, an arcade room, go-kart tracks, paintball battlefield, and batting cages. As long as we're on the subject of parks, the city of Cape Coral has way too many to profile, but here are a few examples. We'll start at Rosen Park, named after the Rosen Brothers. In addition to its boat launch facility, the park offers a scenic location along Chantry Canal, where people walk along the boardwalk and watch the boats. If you enjoy a family picnic, Rosen Park also offers three picnic shelters, all with barbecue pits surrounded by lush tropical plantings. The Yacht Club Community Park was built in 1958 and is one of the original landmarks of the city. It encompasses a wide range of facilities and amenities, including a great public beach directly on the Caloosahatchee River. Picnic shelters, barbecue grills, a fishing pier, community pool, and a restaurant are also nearby. There's also a convenient boat ramp, outdoor racquetball courts, and the Cape Coral Yacht Basin, all within steps of the very popular public beach. Located at the entrance to Cape Harbor is Rotary Park. It consists of 97 acres of mostly salt marsh mixed with some upland and includes a large preserve area. It has a number of nature trails that gently ramble through the preserve. There's even a three-story observation tower. Closer to the parking lot are three picnic shelters with grills and a children's playground. But Cape Coral's largest park is named Four Mile Cove Ecological Preserve. And what a beautiful place this is. Miles of boardwalk through a natural preserve, shaded by various species of mangroves and trees. But you better wear a comfortable pair of shoes. 
This nature preserve is walking only. No jogging, skateboarding, biking, or rollerblading allowed. This park is all about the wildlife, so human intrusion is kept to a minimum. In total, it measures 375 acres and is located at the foot of the Midpoint Bridge, just north of Veterans Parkway. You might consider starting at the Visitor Center. There you'll be able to not only experience a few displays, but study the park's maps and determine your journey. In one direction are the boardwalks that meander through Mother Nature, a few feet above the brackish water wetland areas, which are dense with native vegetation. Simplicity has its own beauty. In another direction is a walking path that allows you to walk on the land alongside the natural splendor. But as the path ends, the reward awaits. A short distance on yet another boardwalk leads you to one of two piers which extend out into the Caloosahatchee River. Water surrounds you in every direction as the gentle waves lap the Cape Coral shoreline protected in part by the root systems of the mangroves. Perhaps the only decision you'll have to make while in this park is determining which direction to turn when you come to a boardwalk crossway. But there's another attraction at the entrance to the Eco Park, and that is the Veterans Memorial Area, which includes a 20-foot tall replica of the 60-foot tall Iwo Jima Memorial near Arlington National Cemetery. There's also a second memorial designed to recognize those that have served our country, and to those yet to serve. If you're thirsty and or hungry, Cape Coral has an unlimited number of watering holes, both off and on the water, as well as both casual and fine restaurants. To begin with, there's the Twisted Conch Seafood Grill and Sports Bar. The outdoor mascot sure seems to grab a lot of attention. Then there's Ford's Garage, which was named after one of Fort Myers' most famous residents. They brand themselves as a neighborhood burger and beer joint. For our final example, we head down to Southwest Cape Coral. That's where you'll find Rum Runners. It's one of the city's most popular establishments, thanks in part to its natural setting and the fact it is located on the water with boats arriving and departing throughout the day. Cape Coral has its share of festivals and annual events. Here are just a few examples. Every July 4th, Cape Coral hosts Red, White and Boom at the foot end of the Cape Coral Bridge. In October, there's Oktoberfest, held at the German American Social Club. It attracts more than 30,000 attendees over a two-week period. In December, there's the colorful Holiday Boat Parade. The 100 or so boats meander their way through the waterways in the southern part of the city, past canal front homes. And finally, if you're looking for a home, Cape Coral certainly has plenty of styles to choose from. There's everything from single-family homes off the water, those on or offering a canal view, to luxury mid-rise towers offering expansive vistas. No matter your preferred lifestyle, Cape Coral has it. Cape Coral has grown a lot since it was first started back in the late 1950s, but it has a lot of room to grow. Currently, more than 160,000 people call Cape Coral home. At Buildout, the experts predict the city will have a population of 400,000. History has proven the earlier you get started, the more there is to enjoy. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in America's waterfront wonderland in the near future. Take care.